Dobry, dobry dzień. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, dear guests of the World uh, Institute of the World Policy. We are happy to welcome you here. Today we are presenting the 20th hour survey, the audit of uh, foreign policy of Ukraine. And this issue is uh, devoted to Ukraine, the United Kingdom foreign policy. Today we will try to satisfy all the possible, all possible um, areas of interest. We have the experts who can speak on the background of this to topic. We have decision makers, current decision makers, who can contribute to decisions, strengthening relations between Kiev and London. F uh, in particular, this week, uh, an important event is uh, scheduled. Uh, Her Excellency will describe this in more detail about this uh, this event. Uh, we expect it to have a big impact on uh, the Ukrainian-British relations and maybe even um, on relations with the EU. The authors of this uh, uh, research uh, are Mikola Leskov and me, and uh, we will start with a brief statement of, of recommendations. I won't describe the the uh, the analysis in much detail. We will go directly to the recommendations after um, uh, statements or interventions made by all the speakers. We will have Q and A sessions, uh, and uh, uh, we welcome very much your comments. Uh, uh, further on, we plan to to publish a discussion paper, which will include all all your comments, uh, meaningful comments. Uh, so um, uh, our objective is uh, to uh, in to involve the official London to counteraction to even more active counteraction to the Russian aggression. Uh, the United Kingdom played a leading role in the uh, European Union in uh, uh, counteraction to Russian aggression, to support of Ukraine. And uh, uh, quite often, uh, the United Kingdom uh, offered uh, more severe sanctions. Unfortunately, the EU uh, fellows not so much here to listen to the UK. Uh, unfortunately, now uh, the United Kingdom uh, has to devote less attention um, uh, to the uh, general uh, foreign policy and uh, devote more attention to more specific aspects in its uh, uh, relations with the EU. And this may have uh, uh, some negative uh, impact on uh, the counteraction to Russian aggression. And for Ukraine, this means that Ukraine has uh, to think about different approaches, how to approach to the policy of foreign policy with the UK. Nevertheless, I believe that uh, the UK will continue to play a very active role and will remain very important for the security of Ukraine and uh, and uh, 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 sanctions imposed by the UK uh, upon Russia may be more strong and uh, more uh, meaningful and deteriorative for Russia than of uh, many Russia, uh, many European countries because of importance of the UK for Russia. Mm, the next part. Uh, uh, aspect of our uh, analysis uh, was uh, the um, was equally important for Ukraine with uh, the EU, with France, with Germany, and uh, this is the issue of reforms in Ukraine. How successful is uh, um, 
uh, Ukraine in introducing reforms. Uh, this is equally important for many European countries. When doing our audit about Germany, um, we uh, heard the opinion that Ukraine was very slow uh, in introducing reforms, uh, that we should be more proactive. But, um, but when we asked uh, what the reforms had to, to be the priority to become like rapers for um, Germany, showing that Ukraine is very uh, active. And at that stage, we did not hear any um, uh, suggestions from our Western uh, partners. Uh, thus, we understood that the Ukraine has to create its own roadmap for reforms with clear indicators and uh, uh, timelines. Uh, it's quite clear that some reforms will produce effect um, not, not tomorrow, not in two years, but in 10 years. And uh, um, in implementing such reforms, we need to have have some uh, indicators, um, some benchmarks uh, showing that um, we are moving in the right direction. Uh, 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 and uh, I believe that uh, uh, the event, which Her Excellency will describe in a moment, uh, we will see that London uh, has intention to play a proactive role. Uh, is ready to provide assistance uh, and intensify the reform process. Uh, so uh, uh, the foreign policy bodies, the think tanks, and maybe even the parliament uh, uh, should uh, strengthen its work aimed at visa-free regime with the United Kingdom. Uh, we have huge respect and we are fond of the United Kingdom, but and uh, visas uh, were uh, cancelled for the Brits um, some years ago. Uh, that's why we suggest that our diplomats should strengthen um, their work uh, on uh, maybe softening the visa regime, maybe not cancellation, which may uh, be not possible, but uh, the uh, softening of visa regime. For example, the chi uh, for example, China, some uh, countries of the Persian Gulf. Uh, uh, the Emirates, uh, they um, experienced the softening of visa regime and uh, all those policies are different. Uh, but, for example, for China, uh, uh, the Chinese pay uh, the same amount of money for their visas, and visas are issued for two years, not for half a year, as for Ukrainians. Uh, in the countries of Persian Gulf, uh, they enjoy almost uh, visa-free regime. They have to fill in the uh, questionnaires or applications and uh, they need not attend uh, visa centers. Uh, mm. This, uh, uh, I think, uh, demonstrates that there is a window of opportunity offered by the UK to mm, uh, other nations in terms of visas, and maybe Ukraine could make good use of this window of opportunity. Also, we believe that today Ukraine w w would uh, should start uh, uh, negotiations with the UK, uh, prospecting for the uh, bre future Brexit. Uh, what will be the format on re uh, of uh, trade relations? Uh, what uh, 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 economic uh, relations could? Uh, could uh, develop in the future. Uh, of course, the interest is here, but uh, mm, mm, we do not feel the readiness. And uh, of course, we understand that here much will depend on the uh, 
solutions uh, that uh, the UK will have with the EU finally, and uh, then uh, they will be able to decide what to what relations to build, what economic and trade relations uh, to build with Ukraine, and also we would uh, ask uh, uh, Your Excellency to. Uh, 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 to state uh, to the to your government that uh, uh, leaders of your government are very much awaited in Ukraine with an official visit, we uh, would like to happy. We would like. Uh, we will be happy to have uh, your prime minister with a visit in Ukraine uh, from uh, John Major. Uh, I think we had no such visits. Uh, we had the visits of uh, vice prime ministers uh, since that time, and uh, we hope that now there is a right moment. Uh, and uh, uh, our recommendation to Ukrainian diplomats and politicians is to um, uh, activate their work and invite uh, representatives of uh, top officials of the UK. And with this, I give the floor to Mikola. Thank you, Sergio. Now, about our recommendations to intensify and uh, support intra-parliamentary dialogue. Mm. The situation is uh, very uh, interesting. During last years, the relations with uh, between two parliaments became very intensive, and uh, um, not only parliamentaries themselves, but Ukrainian diplomats understand the uh, role, the exclusive role of uh, British Parliament uh, um, as, as an example, as a good uh, practice for Ukrainian parliamentaries. Uh, during last years, we experienced several uh, strong parliamentary delegations. The latest was in October 2016, when uh, the British uh, um, MPs uh, visited uh, 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 pre-frontline territories, and uh, uh, they contributed to discussion of the British Russian relations uh, in uh, in their parliament and uh, offered their uh, opinion as, as witnesses of events in Ukraine. Uh, then there was a, a meeting between Miss Zaleschuk with uh, Miss was Prime Minister May and. Uh, um, uh, recently, uh, we have uh, discovered uh, that uh, Prime Minister May uh, decided to convince uh, uh, the Washington uh, decided to convince Washington not to repeal American sanctions uh, against Russia. Mm. I think that active contacts uh, with the Ukrainian. Uh, side contributed to this. Of course, we should not uh, say, uh, feel, tot feel ourselves totally satisfied with this stage of cooperation. We should uh, develop it. Uh, another important aspect is uh, cooperation with the UK in terms of counteraction to money laundering. Uh, Sir, he mentioned uh, that uh, the UK has, uh, he, in this area, very big potential, very big capacity, and uh, it can assist Ukraine. For example, recently a conference devoted to uh, return of uh, um, uh, uh, stolen money was held. Uh, Prime Minister May represented the UK, and uh, unfortunately, the goals announced in that conference remained unimplemented due to Ukrainian shortcomings. And 
Uh, nevertheless, this shows that the role of the UK is, uh, is the key role and leading role in this area. Then we continue our cooperation with the Ukrainian opinion makers. Um, uh, our uh, Institute of World Policy Research held in uh, 2015 proved uh, that uh, uh, that the British citizens are not very much interested in Ukrainian uh, police, politics in Ukraine, uh, but this is not reflected on the official policy of London. And uh, by the way, there are many researchers, uh, uh, scholars in the UK who devote their studies to Ukraine. Uh, and uh, uh, Br British opinion makers produce opinion which is of global nature, by the way. N they are influential not only in the UK, but uh, uh, can communicate these opinions to the whole world. And uh, this allows to counteract to many threats. That's why we have to maintain our contacts with the think tanks and uh, opinion makers and serious scholars. In general, British think tanks like and uh, other institutions like Chatham House, uh, like uh, other mm, institutions, they uh, take uh, moderate pro-Ukrainian positions, so to say. And uh, this allows uh, to communicate uh, um, uh, truth about Ukraine to rather broad public. And also uh, the UK and uh, British mass media uh, Uh, took e e e like intermediary position between pro-Ukrainian mass media and pro-Russian or um, mass media or those mass media which uh, uh, distort uh, information uh, and uh, um, on, on request of Russia. And uh, uh, this is also very important to communicate truth about Ukraine. Mm. During And uh, one more important aspect, during the last five years, the UK had become uh, w one of the five major donors uh, uh, who support Ukraine, uh, in, especially in military training. For example, during the last three years, uh, uh, the UK, uh, like Canada and the US, uh, organized and sponsored training for Ukrainian military. And moreover, the, um, uh, uh, the memorandum was signed, which pu had put this work on more systemic ground. Thank you, McCullough. Your Excellency, maybe uh, you will uh, describe the event which is uh, scheduled for this week uh, in London, uh, initiated by uh, the Embassy. And uh, maybe you will add uh, to what we had mentioned or comment. Uh, so you have between five, seven minutes, and uh, then we'll uh, have questions and answers. Thank you. Uh, Good morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an ambassador of the United Kingdom. I would like to thank to the uh, authors of this audit. Uh, um, I was uh, very much uh, interested uh, to, to see this report, and I will continue in English. To English, and I'm also noting the slow down notices up there. I'm not sure they're for me, but I will speak hopefully slowly and clearly. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for this uh, report, for this audit. Um, it is very interesting to see how others regard the relationship. As somebody who 
on the British side is responsible for that relationship as Her Majesty's ambassador to Ukraine, it's very helpful for me uh, to see how that relationship is regarded here uh, and also to take your advice on board. So thank you and thank you for the recommendations uh, and to all those who have participated in putting this report together. Um, I'll, I'll stick to a couple of themes, if I may, um, and maybe I'll start with the favourite theme in the room, um, because even as I walked in the door this morning, people were asking me these questions. Um, but I'll start with Brexit. Now, Brexit is a fact. The negotiations have started following a referendum uh, just over a year ago. Um, and it will be a complicated negotiation, and I can't tell you the precise nature of the deal that will ultimately result from this but I can tell you a couple of other things. The first is that I don't genuinely believe that Brexit will affect the United Kingdom's relationship with Ukraine. I don't think that's going to happen. And I think there's enough evidence to show that already. Ever since the referendum, I have had more ministerial visits to your country than before the uh, announcement of the Brexit referendum. And as my foreign secretary likes to say, but I agree with him, that the United Kingdom may be leaving the European Union, but we're not leaving the European continent. Ukraine is a European country. Ukraine's security is Europe's security. You face a very difficult aggressor. We will continue to support Ukraine. Uh, and I think that's really important. Yes, of course, the negotiations are going to take a lot of time and effort in the United Kingdom. Of course, that's going to happen. But what I would say is judge us on substance and not form. So I know ministerial visits are really attractive as a metric to measure how interested in a country uh, we really are, but actually judge us on what we do. Uh, and what we do is provide an awful lot of assistance to this country, whether it be military training through Operation Orbital, whether it be technical assistance to help with reform, whether it be humanitarian assistance to help those affected by conflict, or whether it be diplomatic support in international fora. The UK may be leaving the European Union, but we still have a permanent seat on the UN Security Council. We're still the second largest contributor to NATO. We're still the second largest contributor to the OSCE special monitoring mission in Ukraine. We're not going away. Um, it's not that the island that is the United Kingdom is going to sail off somewhere into the middle of the Atlantic. We are still very firmly anchored by the Channel Tunnel to the European continent. So I just want to be very clear on that. Now, it will be a reality that visits to Ukraine may become more difficult. And that's for the very simple fact that we have a government now with a much smaller majority. And when that happens, they tend to be more tied during parliament sessions um, to, oops, I've thrown my papers on the floor. Um, thank you, to, to the voting timetable. Um, so that will, be, that will be a fact. But I just want to reiterate, I don't think that Brexit is going to affect our support or our relationship uh, with Ukraine. And I think we've demonstrated that already. Now, in terms of the conference this week, um, that's going to be a really important event. Your country's delegation will be headed by your Prime Minister, uh, and he will take a number of his cabinet of ministers with him. Now, the reasons for this conference, and it was a United Kingdom initiative, were that we were very concerned that the news about Ukraine in the international media was largely negative. If you read about Ukraine, you're reading about conflict, you're reading about crisis, you're reading about corruption. But actually, there's a very positive story here that people need to understand, that over the past three years, Ukraine has made more progress on the reform agenda, either than any previous government made, or in fact, that anybody thought possible at the time this government came in. Now, it's not perfect, and we want more to happen, and we want it to happen faster. So on the one hand, we want to draw attention to the successes that this country has had. On the second, we want to galvanize international support around Ukraine. This is a long-term endeavor. This is not a short, quick fix. And we know that the attention span of the international community can sometimes be short. So this is about galvanizing support around you. But it's also about being very clear to Ukraine of the need to continue that reform path with enthusiasm, with energy, and with determination because Ukraine's best de defense against outside destabilization and, and malign forces is to have strong institutions, is to tackle corruption so it doesn't become your weakness from within, as it has been for so long, and to demonstrate that you are the European country that you want to be, that's sharing our values and sharing our principles. 
So I think it, there's, there's a very good story to help. Now, I'm not going to give away, as some people have wanted me to this morning, exactly who's meeting who in London. I'm sorry. I'm not going to reveal everybody's schedules. Um, but, but do watch. Uh, there will be a number of high-level meetings, and I think that will reassure you um, of our commitment to the bilateral relationship. Um, this is not something um, that we do readily. Um, this is an important event. Um, and one that we take very seriously, because we take reform seriously in this country, as I say, not just for its own sake. Um, you mentioned visas. Um, I agree with you. It's not easy, uh, particularly not now that you have a visa liberalization uh, regime with Schengen countries. Um, I think the best advice I can give on that is, firstly, it's not particular to Ukraine. Um, we have similar regimes with a number of countries around the world. I think if you don't like it, your government needs to lobby my government much more on these issues. But what I will say is we do have a problem um, with uh, a degree of visa applications where documentation is not filled out correctly or is faked. I think there are a lot of agents in your country who are badly advising visa applicants, and that does not help. So I think we need to work to make sure that people, when they apply, are applying correctly, that they're using the correct documentation, they're not using false documentation. Uh, and then we also need to make sure that you are being very clear about what you want out of a visa regime and communicating that back into London. Um, so, so I think that's something that we have to continue uh, to work on uh, together, although I can't make any promises, obviously, uh, from my point uh, here. Um, Interparliamentary relations, I think, are good, um, largely down to people such as Svetlana, who, um, I was going to say stalked the Prime Minister, that's not true, but um, uh, she used all her, her skills and talents uh, to meet with the Prime Minister. Those sorts of opportunities are really important, and I'm delighted that, that she used that. But actually, at a working level, we see a lot of exchanges going backwards and forwards between our parliaments. I note from the surveys in Ukraine that trust in your parliament is extraordinarily low. And of course, that's a worry because that is a foundation of democracy. So we are working very hard with parliamentarians in this country, with the RADA, to try and build trust and faith in what is the cornerstone of your the diplomatic system. And that, that's really, uh, really important. Um, what else did I have to say? What else did you ask me? I think that covered most of my points. Um, I think I would just end on saying, um, don't judge us by the number of visits. Judge us by what we do. Um, judge us by the material uh, substance of the relationship. Um, I think the fact that we can have an open dialogue is really important. Um, I enjoy having the debate. Um, I think it's essential that we continue to talk to each other. We're not coming from a point of perfection. You know, the United Kingdom um, is going through an interesting period right now. I'm pretty convinced we'll come out of it the other side. Uh, we tend to do so. Um, but what we're very, very keen to do is to work in partnership with countries like Ukraine, sharing expertise and sharing knowledge, because you have one of the most important things in this country, which is human capital and a younger new generation that wants to change this country and take it forward. And I think that's really important, uh, and we salute you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Posol. I would like to say that we, in our analysis, Thank you very much, Your Excellency. In our analysis, we appreciated uh, very and uh, evaluated very positively the uh, relations and attitude of the United Kingdom. I think pr Ukrainian Prime Minister's visit will be used for uh, giving thanks to uh, Prime Minister May for the Ukraine support to Ukraine. I think this was uh, um, uh, huge and unprecedented support. I think that uh, uh, that uh, uh, UK uh, contributed much to this aid support uh, without without excessive PR. Many countries uh, um, make a huge PR on minor actions. Why the UK did more than um, covered it in mass media. In our uh, uh, 
report, we wanted to express that we always wish a higher level of partnership. And that we found out that there is some space for strengthening relations. Now I'm pleased to give the floor to Svetlana Zalishchuk, who is a co-chair of the Interparliamentary Group for Relations with the United Kingdom, your unique meet with the leaders of uh, the UK was already mentioned. Maybe you will uh, now speak in more detail uh, with whether Prime Minister um, had heard you before meeting with President Trump uh, and uh, what is your assessment of uh, uh, your parliamentary work? Uh, and partnership with the previous British Parliament, uh, with the current membership of Parliament, etc. Good morning, dear colleagues. I would like to thank you for the audit. For us, as uh, the friendship group, as the parliamentaries, this will be um, a very uh, interesting report. You asked about our meeting with the Prime Minister. Some aspects are, um, uh, I will, uh, some aspects I will postpone to my memories, uh, um, uh, but uh, um, now uh, I would like to mention that we discussed uh, the dimension of our parliamentary relations between Ukraine and uh, the UK, um, uh, that we visit uh, uh, of our parliamentary group, Maleksi uh, Ryabchin from Batkivshina faction, Olga Kavalska and uh, me, uh, we uh, invited our uh, colleagues from the uh, British Parliament to attend uh, pre-front area in Donbass. The leader of that uh, parliamentary group called this visit Revelation, uh, which meant probably that they uh, made a discovery for them. Uh, uh, this uh, word revelation um, for me reflects uh, the level of uh, uh, relations between Ukraine and the UK today. On the one hand, there are there are many opportunities, uh, the potential for cooperation, but but Ukraine remains um, uh, uh, insufficiently known, insufficiently open for the UK. I would like to mention some positive aspects, some achievements, challenges, and opportunities. So the positive things, achievements, today geopolitical world remains very dynamic. We observe this in the U.S. hybrid war as new challenge to um, geopolicy and uh, the uh, events in today's Europe. In this uh, situation, we should not look at the roles of states as uh, the um, stability. Uh, they are changing. And today, I would like uh, to identify the UK as one of uh, as the most important ally for Ukraine in the continent since 2014 uh, the government in UK uh, had changed but uh, the relations between two countries had not changed. For example, between parliaments, we have very strong cooperation. Unlike uh, with uh, other European parliaments, even with our strongest allies like Germany, um, France, but the level of support to Ukraine in British Parliament is higher, is much higher than in other parliaments in the EU. In other parliaments, uh, uh, mm, the structure is slightly different. Uh, uh, they have opposition and uh, um, leading uh, coalition, while in the UK they are very homogeneous in their opinion about Ukraine. Then 
uh, what we have not mentioned today, this is the role of the UK in such uh, fora as uh, parliamentary assemblies. For example, parliamentary assembly of the uh, Council of Europe. Uh, Mm, a British role was decisive in making decision about sanctions against Russia. Actually, all the most severe resolutions against Russia were very much supported and led, actually, by the UK. I would like to mention uh, Parliament. Parliamentary Assembly of NATO, Parliamentary Assembly of the OEC, uh, when resolutions about Crimea, human rights in Crimea were passed, uh, about territorial integrity of Ukraine, uh, all those resolutions were passed with big support from uh, the UK and uh, from uh, British uh, MPs. Uh, in those uh, international bodies. Also, I would like to say that today is our success as a state which tries uh, to, to develop, to overcome fundamental challenges like Russian aggression. And uh, this position needs uh, allies and supporters. And the UK, uh, among other NATO countries, appeared one of the most proactive Ukrainian supporter. They supported sanctions, and uh, they played exceptional role in passing those sanctions. Uh, sometimes with other co European countries, we have to to work very, very actively promoting sanctions while support us. Then Westminster Foundation for Democracy working, supported by the UK and working here in Kiev, they promote, they organize visits for Ukrainian parliamentaries and strengthen relations. Dozens of MPs were provided with opportunity to study in uh, the UK, etc. Now about challenges. Uh, you wrote about free trade area after Brexit. Uh, 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 after Brexit, there, there may be gray zone here, and for us now there is a challenge. What will be the nature of our trade relations? Uh, when the UK remained in the EU, uh, they had a possibility to influence their European partners in their position as to Ukraine. So now for Ukraine, there is a challenge how to uh, strengthen our work with the other European countries when uh, the UK will leave the um, EU. Uh, then uh, uh, our uh, relations with the, the U.S., for example. Also, you mentioned uh, um, direct, foreign direct investments, and uh, um, uh, we are interested in strengthening them. But of course, much will depend on our counteraction to corruption, uh, the uh, reform of judiciary, the enforcement of contracts, and so on and so forth, uh, which makes us not so attractive for British businessmen. Uh, uh, and uh, visa regime, uh, I once was uh, rejected to get uh, visa in my life, and I was re uh, rejected uh, by um, the British Embassy. Uh, so we have to, to keep an eye on this aspect of our work. Uh, and the, uh, Last, my last statement for today. When we met with uh, Prime Minister Mary, which had just five minutes, it was uh, uh, between her report uh, in Parliament uh, on Wednesday uh, and before her uh, visit on Thursday to the United States. Uh, 
uh, and the Prime Minister found this five minutes to, to meet with me. She very clearly understand the role of Ukraine, and her message was as, uh, was the following: that Ukraine success of Ukraine would mean the success uh, uh, in Europe and. Uh, Thank you. Now I would like uh, to give the floor to Mr. Handogi, uh, Ambassador of Ukraine to the UK. Um, uh, could you share your opinion about uh, uh, cooperation between Ukraine and uh, the UK? And uh, I know that currently you work in one of the think tanks uh, in uh, Ukraine. I know that you prepared one of, of surprises. Um, thank you very much. I would like to thank for this research. I believe that it is really a document that is necessary and that will be useful and uh, it should become a document that will draw attention of officials that deal with practical issues of foreign policy. I do not know whether they will read this document uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs but I believe that your organization and all of us, we should be proactive in this respect. And uh, we should promote these ideas and we should draw attention of our colleagues to these research and to other researches carried out by the Institute of World Policy. And here they mentioned about the conference that will be held in London this week. So maybe it would be interesting uh, if this research be announced or presented at this conference. So we believe that this research should be mentioned during this conference. And today we heard a lot about our relationship with the great uh, with the, uh, great britain and uh, uh, great britain is one of our most active friends countries that support ukraine and i fully agree with this as a former ambassador i can say that during turbulent times i was um, Ambassador to the United Kingdom 2010-2014, and uh, we had active dialogue in foreign policy with, uh, with the United Kingdom. So here they said about absence of visits, but I believe I, and I uh, maybe um, Your Excellency would agree with me, so, uh, um, Great Britain have located the diplomacy, and uh, you can count how many times uh, Great Britain leaders visited Poland in recent years. I do not believe that there were many visits. And uh, we want more active role, more active position, and political dialogue. But the matter is not in the number of visits, but policy is important. Policy of Great Britain in relation to Ukraine. I don't believe whether it is a surprise, but I would like to mention one important thing. This strategic support provided by Great Britain to Ukraine, it has serious uh, historic background. And uh, I believe that in such research you did, there should be 
a page, a half page about background of relationship between the countries. In May this year, we marked the date. Not many pe people paid attention to it, but it says a lot about the origin of our relationship. Here in my hands, I hold a document that was prepared by the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs of Great Britain. This is an analytical paper uh, dated uh, as of 9th of May uh, 1947. So I will read the first introductory part. Approval of the cabinet for an approach to the government of Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic through the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of the USSR, suggesting that diplomatic relations be established between the Ukraine and the United Kingdom. I have discussed this proposal with His Majesty's Ambassador in Moscow and have reached the conclusion that we have little to lose and a good deal to gain by such a move. Uh, so, maybe it got lost in our institutional memory that in 1947, Great Britain wanted to establish diplomatic relationship with the Ukrainian Socialist Republic. And uh, this proposal was provided to the um, um, uh, to Mr. Vyshinsky, uh, Deputy Foreign Minister, uh, to provide this proposal to the government of uh, Ukrainian uh, Soviet Republic. Mr. Vyshinsky answered this proposal uh, with a brief note. Uh, as of uh, 29th of uh, September uh, 1949, and it says uh, that your proposal, uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador and uh, uh, Charge de Fer, uh, your proposal about the establishment of diplomatic relationship with the Ukrainian Socialist Republic and the exchange of diplomats uh, was provided to um, uh, the um, government of Ukrainian Socialist Republic, uh, uh, and it was signed by, signed by Mr. Vyshinsky. Of course, there was no answer to this. We can discuss this issues about the reason of the step made by Great Britain, but it is evident that these are long-term stable relationship between our country and uh, Great Britain, and uh, the vision of Great Britain that one day there will be an embassy in Ukraine, and we will have bilateral, diplomatic, economic, um, military, and political relationship as two independent countries. So this is a historic component, and uh, we can go in more detail in our relationship that has started from the times of Kiev and Russ, and there were many interested facts that show that Great Britain and Ukraine will have bilateral, friendly, strategic relationship. And there was a fact such as a provision of Faraday Arctic Station to Ukraine at the beginning of 1990s, and this is our own Arctic sta uh, Station named after Vernonatsky. So, uh, so this was a great gift, and uh, it 
that uh, is really a great contribution. So all these facts that put this relationship in the context, and we should take it into account. We should uh, develop our relationship. And uh, in the end, I would like to say briefly about support of Great Britain, of our Euro-Atlantic integration, this support is really important. And taking into account Brexit, and we are really grateful that Great Britain says that it doesn't influence our relationship, and uh, uh, they will continue to support our cooperation. But uh, I believe that we should um, improve our relationship. And uh, um, uh, when Great Britain is in EU, this is one thing. And when they are outside these negotiations, this is another thing. Uh, so there was a visit to London. We prepared a communique. And uh, Great Britain proposed to include to the, into this communique a mention about the prospects of membership of Ukraine in the EU. Unfortunately, and we now understand why, the directives that were provided to delegation, they didn't envisage such a message. And uh, it was said when we had to um, explain why we are not ready to include this issue to our community. And it was 2012, 2013. So for the embassy, it was a serious blow because we actively worked with the office in order to get this message in our joint community. And also the support of our NATO membership. Uh, we always had the support. And I remember the Bucharest uh, summit in 2008, and I was the head of the mission to NATO, and we worked a lot with Great Britain in order to um, make this discussion more active and with uh, Germany and France and uh, this um, uh, found its reflection in the final document of the Bucharest summit. And it said that Ukraine uh, may become uh, the mem member of NATO, and this was made with the support of Great Britain. And I would like to say that the Budapest Memorandum, this is one of the pages of our history, and we do not speak a lot about it. I do not want to go into detail, but I had to discuss a lot of uh, this topic, and uh, I believe that there is a serious gap. Maybe I can find another word, maybe a drawback in our relationship. And I believe that Great Britain didn't use the opportunities of the Budapest Memorandum at the beginning of Russian Federation aggression against Ukraine. And we understand that formally Great Britain implemented its obligations. Um, and didn't violate, but uh, I believe that we should revisit this issue and think in what way we can uh, revitalize this document because it is really important today. Thank you.
Василий Мирошниченко. I will be grateful for your remarks on the development of economic and trade relationship between Great Britain and Ukraine and uh, about the markets, the areas of cooperation, and uh, about the format of cooperation after Brexit. Uh, thank you. It is really a pleasure to take part in this event. This is a jubilee in the audit and uh, as a director of uh, City Ukraine British City Club, this organization promotes economic uh, cooperation between our countries. Uh, it was established in 2005, and I'm really glad that all now uh, this um, uh, is happening in the Ukraine Crisis Media Center. So uh, when I wake up, I think what I did for improvement of the relationship. So my daughter uh, flew to London uh, and this um, morning, so this is symbolic for me today. And before going to the main topic, I would like to say that uh, the um, uh, United Kingdom government invests in education and public diplomacy. And the uh, three people in this panel, they got a uh, uh, scholarship, uh, Sergei and me, we had the uh, Magister study and uh, Joint Smith Fellowship was provided to Svetlana. Uh, so investment of Great Britain yields uh, result, and in several years, uh, um, the, um, uh, there were five stipends. In several years, we had 15 um, scholarship for uh, for Ukrainians from the um, government of Great Britain. So we move forward. So our economic relationship is not at the good level. Uh, maybe on the overall statistics, uh, it looks not so bleak if we consider uh, this is about two billion dollars. We import chemical products and the machinery, cars, agricultural equipment that is imported, and then we export raw materials. Uh, agricultural produce and uh, here if we speak about potential we believe that ukraine can improve this turnover and also uh, to improve uh, export of value added products and concerning raw material we believe that the volume should be increased and uh, uh, the association agreement with the EU uh, provided opportunities for small and medium-sized enterprises to promote their products. And I know about two successful cases, uh, and those uh, uh, who um, uh, ex want to export blueberries. Uh, and also, uh, my friends uh, started to develop uh, uh, the ch uh, choose to uh, Great Britain and uh, also investment uh, about two billion dollars. These are uh, not huge funds, but uh, in Poland uh, uh, they invest six billion, in Sweden it's about twelve billion, in Turkey eight billion. Also, the investment uh, uh, that are considered British, they are not always British because there is money of Ukrainian business and other businesses that uh, choose British jurisdiction in order to come to Ukrainian market. And this is normal, but it is difficult to see whether uh, it is British or international capital. And in the main sectors, we should uh, uh, mention such sectors, uh, uh, tobacco companies, British American Imperial Tobacco, these companies here uh, since 1990s, they form 5% of Ukrainian budget and they came here and there are many 
identifications for the foreign investment, but uh, uh, market is the most important, and the availability of the resources. And for these companies, they uh, and Unilever company that uh, uh, saw a huge market here, they saw great potential. And uh, uh, cooperation in energy sector, and uh, there are medium-sized enterprises with British capital. They extract oil and gas, oil and Cadgan Petroleum Company. They have in their structure investment uh, from Britain and uh, foreign investment and uh, Ukrainian investment, for example, from Kolomoisky and Shell Company uh, didn't start active extraction of gas. Uh, there was a big project signed uh, on the Yuzilski uh, field, but the company, uh, uh, they saw the fourth major, uh, uh, the war, and the decision was motivated by the fact that the um, prices for energy resources in the world fell, and the um, shale gas was too expensive, and the shale company is, uh, is uh, they are actively monitoring the market and the mo uh, in the, uh, at the moment. Uh, Global Spodil Plaza, um, British company is the owner, and Ukrainian oligarchs, they like real estate market. Uh, Mr. Pinchuk and Mr. Rakhmet, and Mr. Bogolubov, they have property in Great Britain. So Ukrainian oligarchs, they like um, British real estate sector, and also we have Becker Diller and um, service companies here, and also state contract agency that help Ukrainian company uh, government uh, to make procurements, and also um the uh, company that helps with uh, constructing roads and london is a strategic partner concerning investment and starting 2005 uh, ukrainian companies uh, 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 such as Mikro Mironivsky uh, um, product and uh, other companies uh, of Ukraine and uh, Mironivsky uh, bread product, they are the most attractive for investors. And concerning agricultural invest, uh, investment, negative stories, Elantacom Company and Maria Company, British investors invested there, and uh, there were some uh, illegal actions by these co uh, companies. That's why investors didn't want to continue cooperation. So uh, where I see potential, I see it in export of goods with uh, um, added value and also um, cooperation in the IT sector. Uh, Buckley's Bank, they have a back office here. As, and uh, here we may do much more, and the uh, Rhino Air Company that will fly uh, to uh, London and Manche Manchester. So we are going to work further, and we will improve our cooperation. Unfortunately, um, Her Excellency is going to leave us now, and uh, all proposals that will be here today, we will provide them to the Embassy of Great Britain. Thank you very much for being with us, and uh, we hope that this discussion was fruitful. We continue. I'm sorry. Oh, interrupting you may be about free trade agreement and the associ association agreement. I believe that it is an active agreement, and I believe that uh, uh, in uh, two years, maybe there will be some mechanism invented. 
maybe the decision will be taken that there will be additional protocol or a separate agreement can be signed on a free trade zone. And I believe that Ukrainian government should raise this issue and discuss it with the British government. This issue is not very acute for Great Britain because they have many problems uh, that they should address first. And uh, um, I do not think that uh, uh, this uh, um, area will stop. So uh, please, uh, you can provide your comments. Please introduce yourself first. Alek Zarubinsky. Once again, I would like to thank you for this research. This is really interesting. And uh, here, many issues are raised, and you provide recommendations based on your analysis. And I have a question. Mr. Mirosnichenko, I believe that. Uh, uh, this uh, what 2 billion level of uh, cooperation is too low and grade not two. This is one billion. Investment is different. We are speaking about turnover now. I calculated it. So in Great Britain, they have uh, better turnover with the small countries such as Salvador, uh, Honduras, and Peru and Mexico. They have better. Uh, so here, big projects should be implemented, and uh, of course I like uh, blueberry and birch ju juice, but uh, we should uh, do more. And Shell wanted to provide more for use of skiff, um, oil field, and in uh, a non-conventional gas, they wanted to provide the 10 uh, billion. So. Uh, I wanted to address my question to Ambassador, but maybe you can answer this question. Uh, Royal Dutch and Shell, they say that the events in the East, and you said it correctly, that also this is the uh, cost of oil uh, that fell. So. Uh, they, the company may return in our market. In your report, uh, it is said that uh, this company, uh, this well-renowned company with a very good reputation, they say that there were attempts of uh, interference uh, um, in their business by the state. What about this interference? If this company declares this, uh, so we cannot speak about investment. So this is the question. I do not have an answer to this question. So maybe Mikola studied it. Maybe he knows about this uh, interference. Uh, the use of norms, retrospective. So the, uh, shall. Uh, in uh, uh, there is an agreement on the protection of investment, and by this use of uh, new norms that were introduced, uh, they these norms were uh, uh, they um, referred to these norms, and this is not the only case when the companies that uh, um, exist they. Uh, uh, say that some norms are violated and there is an interference, and they try to find support of the British Embassy and the oil and gas company, another oil and gas company, uh, also addressed um, on, on the issue of um, uh, oil um, extraction rules, and they applied to Stockholm Accord. So these are negative examples, and it is evident that these negative situations do not promote the image of Ukraine. But I do not think that the situation that uh, had place, that so uh, they have strategic interest in Ukraine, and if you want, if if they want to return. 
Uh, they will take into account uh, these matters. They, uh, the main thing about business, we said the problems that uh, create obstacles, they are not unique in Ukraine. So the problem with corruption, the problem with courts, this is not uh, only in Ukraine. These are universal problems, and when we prepared our recommendations, one of the main indicators, we may speak a lot about success or uh, success of reform, but a main indicator of the success of reforms is when investment increases. You can hold conferences, but uh, if, for example, um, we will have uh, such a level of investment by Great Britain as they have in Poland. Uh, this is three times more than in Ukraine. This will be a good result. Starting winter, at uh, the beginning of spring of 2014, I had a meeting with the vice president of a shell company in London. Not even a meeting. It was uh, a big meeting, and uh, his uh, aides uh, asked me to come to him, and uh, uh, we um, communicated according to protocol, and I asked uh, him about the continuation of their work in Ukraine, and there were events we all know about in Crimea, and uh, he answered, you know, shall is accustomed to work in difficult conditions. You see our work in Africa, and he said that such events that uh, were forecast or happened in Ukraine, so this was not an obstacle for uh, their work. So I was not surprised when they put force majeure as the reason and uh, the main reason why they do not work uh, here, this is more economic issue. I'm thankful for this meeting, and I would like to say that in 1945, there was a Yalta conference, and we were supported. Uh, and uh, now Ukraine, and in 1945, when Ukraine was still in the Soviet Union, at the proposal of Winston Churchill, they wo voted uh, in order that Ukraine became a, a founding member of UNO. And there is a book on this. It is interesting. There are a lot of uh, photos that are unique, and uh, my vote has provided this, and I was a majoritarian candidate and, uh, uh, in Eupatoria, and uh, uh, when they came from Malta to Saki and in Crimea, there was only one military aerodrome. All other aerodromes were ruined. And when Churchill and Roosevelt came from Malta, they uh, went uh, uh, above uh, um, Ukraine and Belarus, and uh, Churchill saw those ruining in uh, Belarus and the Ukrainian Republic, and he made a proposal in order to vote uh, Stalin and Roosevelt uh, they, uh, in order that they vote um, that these uh, republics be a founding member. Um, so several votes uh, as the Soviet Union and uh, uh, Belarus and uh, Ukraine. And uh, not many people know that uh, 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 Roosevelt voted for Belarus uh, Republic and the Ukrainian Republic. And he was asked why there are 52 uh, states and you didn't propose this to uh, the states to become founding members. So uh, he died in uh, 
1945, and then there was Truman in office, and uh, uh, Lenny Marison's uh, uh, daughter of Churchill came, and his grandson came, and uh, Roosevelt's grandson came, and uh, we traveled in Crimea, and we saw those places the father and grandfather visited and uh, I want to address to Svetlana. So uh, maybe Great Britain Parliament should help you. We do not implement a revolution, uh, resolution of the Council of Europe. And uh, if it is not implemented, so uh, Russia may be thrown out of the, uh, this uh, Council of Europe. We are going to resolve the 2007 roku and resolution 2010 roku відносно того, щоб внести зміни до вибор до закону про вибори народних депутатів України по пропорційній системі, але не по єдиному загальнодержавному округу, як сьогодні йде в нас 50%, а від партії на округ. На округі. Я я це дуже важливо. Від цього наша держава сьогодні страждає, до речі. І від цього в нас і економічні, і політичні показники. Я не критикую. Я прошу, щоб державу спасти цим самим. Дякую за увагу. Дуже вам дякую. Чи будуть ще запитання, коментарі? Будь ласка. Good afternoon, I'm Olga Tarasenko, I'm from a Journalistics Institute. My question to uh, Ms. Svetlana, uh, uh, the ambassador mentioned that Ukraine is mentioned all, quite often in negative uh, context, uh, and I recollected one of uh, Western journalists uh, you recollect Ukraine as your old grand, uh, grand mother when something bad happens to it. How do you think how Ukrainian journalists uh, should inform uh, the international community about Ukraine? This is a big question about uh, mass media, very broad question. I would uh, uh, speak about the role of media in revival of uh, our relations with uh, foreign countries. Russian contributes huge resources to such uh, uh, agencies as Russia today. Also, Russian oligarchs uh, uh, buy uh, mass media in the UK. Our partners in the UK um, uh, hear and use about you, even about the UK from mass media, which are owned by uh, the Russians. In this audit, we presented uh, a story when a newspaper close to you keep. Uh, um, uh, stated that visa-free regime was given to Ukraine despite referendum in the Netherlands, although the uh, visa-free regime had no relation to referendum in the Netherlands. Then Ukrainian media are much poorer than Russian media in the United Nations where uh, the uh, in united nations uh, russia has 50 diplomats and 20 me and 20 mass media while ukraine has eight diplomats in the end and uh, no uh, mass media when churkin for example took floor in the un uh, uh, 20 mass media could uh, uh, cover him all around the world, uh, while Ukrainian diplomats are not covered at all when they speak in the UK. Uh, currently, the parliament and uh, uh, 
Mm, uh, the Foreign Affairs Ministry had developed the law on the diplomacy. Uh, this will be beginning of our reform in the foreign relations and diplomatic um, system of the country. And of course, we have to develop our media presence. Uh, uh, recently, um, uh, an uh, international TV channel started to work in Ukrainian, English, and Crimean Tatar, but unfortunately, the signal is weak. Uh, and of course, Gazprom, which donates money to NGOs, to journalists, to mass media, they are unbeatable in uh, this financial resources, and it is difficult to compete with them. Nevertheless, I think that this allows uh, journalists and uh, um, uh, 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 broad public to hear about Ukraine. Will you please uh, finalize your statements because our time is over. I would like to add about media. UCMC organizes media tours for journalists from different countries. I think this is one of the most efficient methods and effective methods we to cooperate with foreign media. We organize uh, uh, meetings with businesses, with journalists, with NGOs. As for the UK, during the last three years, number of articles about Ukraine had grown considerably. Recently, your revision TV contest, uh, which was shown on, uh, on TV everywhere in the world, including Great Britain, and uh, what have we reached via Eurovision? We had overcome uh, the stereotype that uh, the war is uh, in Ukraine everywhere because in U uh, there was a stereotype that uh, after Maidan events, the war started and the war is everywhere here in the country. Um, but after Eurovision, they had seen that there is no war everywhere and it is possible to visit Ukraine. Now we uh, hope for positive uh, changes. I would like to thank to the authors of this uh, survey and to wish them to continue this useful work. Maybe you should think how to implement those recommendations which are reflected in this survey and uh, to make it uh, known to broader public. Thank you very much for your recommendations. Of course, we will communicate this message to Ukrainian diplomacy and to foreign partners and, not, and try to see the results of this work in our policy. And thank you for a background section in our service. We had been thinking about that, but at the stage of publication, we postponed this part. Um, thank you for your participation. Hope to see you later.